I'm Daniel Kaiser from GameTrailers.com here at E3 2014 with Bob, who's the lead designer on one of the most talked about games of the show, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. The game looks fantastic. I just had a chance to get hands on with it. Uh, Bob, congratulations on the game being here at the show. How excited are you to show it off and give hands on with it? Uh, I cannot express how excited we are. It really shines when people get to finally play it. There's so much room for improvisation and you know surprising things that are happening. It's one of the things that keeps the demo fresh when you're doing it you know, day after day, all day long. Yeah, absolutely, and I can really see you guys have been talking about how no two experiences will be the same, and that really shines through in terms of the actual gameplay. So talk about this Nemesis system, though, because it, it is pretty in-depth. So from a design standpoint, talk about how it really makes this game unique. Yeah, so it's, there's a lot of layers to it. The base level, you know, every single enemy in the world, the guys that in every other game you, you think of as generic grunts or cannon fodder, these guys have this potential in our game to grow and build a history and a relationship with you. So they're not only evolving like an emergent story, but they're also creating, you know, personal kind of nemeses. That's that's why we call it the nemesis system. That you're going to build bosses and sub bosses that you're going to be able to go after. And the way that can happen is, it's another distinction for us. Our game time always moves forward. So instead of reloading a checkpoint, replaying the last couple minutes of your gameplay, things are going to move forward. The guy that just killed you has just made a name for himself. He killed this monster who's been terrorizing all of Sauron's leaders and so that gets him promoted so now you know his name you know his strengths and weaknesses you know he's got a personality he's now got a history with you he remembers he killed you and he'll throw that in your face when you go back and meet him again and try and get revenge so it kind of it really builds a different relationship with the with the enemies than you've ever had in, in other games yeah and I really think that it, it establishes the idea that there's progress but also that everything that you're doing um, has meaning which is which is really neat and also no matter how much you're planning it seems like things can go a lot of different ways once you get into combat right yeah that's right it's a really uh, layered sandbox there's so many systems interacting in this game you've got your, your basic combat you know your melee uh, fluid kind of lethal uh, third-person action stuff but you can seamlessly go into range you can use stealth you can kind of disengage the environment plays a big role you know things that can explode there's monsters all these crazy beasts that can come out and get involved and all that layered in and, and combining with the nemesis system because all these guys have very different and unique strengths and weaknesses too so all those different play styles going up against guys who can counter them or they're afraid of them or they hate them really creates this kind of endless possibility for uh, surprising moments to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk real quickly about the choice in the play style because obviously you can go into this game and be very methodical in how you plan out your attacks and your your path to uh, dominating uh, the, the enemies, but also you can kind of just go into the fray. So what are you doing to kind of promote or reward or just kind of uh, let people do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a way, it, it lets you kind of control the difficulty, you know? If you just want to run straight after the big war chief with lots of bodyguards right in the middle of a stronghold, you can do it. You're going to get overwhelmed, and it's, Good luck. <laughs> it's a suicide mission, but you can try. Uh, and every once in a while, you'll see somebody who just gets lucky or they're just really good and they manage to pull that off. But uh, if you want to you know, have a bit more of a strategic approach, you learn, you know, spend a little more time strategizing, you learn the strengths, you learn the weaknesses, you, you figure out what you can exploit about these guys and all his bodyguards. And then a layer deeper than that guy's strengths and weaknesses, you can go after his bodyguards first before meeting him. You can whittle them down so he's alone. Or uh, what we're showing at E3 is a little deeper into the game where you've kind of grown in power and You've got the ability to dominate these guys and bend them to your will, make them your own army. And then that can get tricky too. If you get all the bodyguards of a war chief to belong to you and brand them and make them yours, then you draw him out. He thinks he's a badass with all these guys supporting him and you just flip them all and they attack him for you. And so there's a lot of different possibilities for how you can kind of manipulate the world to, to help you take on tougher guys with a little bit more ease. Yes, and of course throughout the game, as you're progressing, uh, doing so will reward you with runes that uh, uh, you know help you adapt to the uh, gameplay and al also alter uh, your powers. Talk a little bit about that and what we can expect to see in terms of how you're going to develop your character. Right, so there's the, the skill trees, of the ranger skills and the wraith skills, the, you know, the physical stuff and the wraith world stuff that are the kind of big new tools in the arsenal that you'll unlock as you level up. But uh, the runes you're talking about are, are how you customize and upgrade your weapons. Uh, in, in Tolkien lore, you know, weapons are real characters. Like they, they really matter. They're you know, Glamdring, Gandalf's sword. Uh, you know, you see in the in the Hobbit films, the the Goblin King. When the dwarves come in, he reacts to the sword more than the dwarves. He shouts, you know, the foe hammer. He's 
these characters, these weapons are actually like they're real characters. They have names, they have histories written on the blades, and so that's kind of what we're doing with the runes. You know, you kill a captain or a war chief in the Nemesis system, and what you're going to be able to get from that is sort of the loot he drops. Is you're going to be able to carve his fate into your into your blade and customize your blade with uh, with those kinds of elements that upgrade your your health, your damage, your you know ammo, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, it's very in depth. Now, lastly, the the universe obviously is rich and, and story, but uh, what uh, what is it about the Nemesis system that lends itself so well to uh, the Lord of the Rings universe? Uh, obviously, a great opportunity for the things you just mentioned. But did you guys design the Nemesis system around the richness of this universe, or did you have the game mechanic idea first that just happened to apply well to this? Well, it, it really kind of came hand in hand. I mean, we were working on uh, on Middle Earth. Uh, when we came up with these ideas, and it just fits so nicely into Mordor. It's such a dangerous, just nasty place. And you know, Tolkien at one point said, "We're all orcs in the Great War," and, and trying to capture like what is orc society like, and what are these guys' relationships with each other like? They're not just kind of big, dumb, crazy monsters. They're they're really just like people driven by fear and hate. Like that's what the the orc society is really representing. We're trying to get that authenticity too. That it's entirely in Mordor, but. Uh, you get the nuance of these guys each having their own personalities and their own relationships with each other as well as you. So yeah. Sounds like LA sometimes too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, appreciate your time very much. The game is coming out. You got a release date. Tell me what it is. That's yeah, October 7th. October 7th. All right, we appreciate it very much and best of luck here at E3. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Here <laughs> you